Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Echi Gozier. I love research and I am a doctor. So please, if today is your first time of coming here, please hit the subscribe button, the share and like. Then if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back. Thank you for supporting me. I really appreciate that. I really have, if you guys are not here, I won't be here. So I am grateful and feel free to always support anyone at any point in time because the sky is big enough for everybody to fly. You uh, don't have it at the back of your mind that yeah, it's somebody else can stop you from getting to where you ought to be. Having said that, Let's get to what we have for today. I'm going to be talking about the five very important virtual etiquettes you need to know. So let's start. Number one, test your computer setup before any interview. Why am I saying this? If you don't test your computer setup and come up for any interview, the tendency is that you will be distracted if the setup didn't go as planned. And you may come up and it will happen that this platform they are using, you don't even know much about it. But imagine if you did a test run before that time. So you would have had a basic knowledge of what is going to happen. So let me give you an example. When I just first came into Canada, I had my first interview. It was a face-to-face -face interview, so there wasn't much to worry about. I got the job, but I wanted another job. When I applied, the interview was supposed to be virtual interview. And I was happy. I got ready for the interview. I had studied for it, gotten myself ready. But I didn't think about the setup or what to do concerning the platform we're going to use because they sent me a message and said we're going to be using ring central for the interview so to me i was like since they said they will send link to the ring central that once they send the link i will log in no idea of what ring central was like i don't even know what it was i've never used it before and i didn't go to check what it was i was even surprised at the end of the interview i was like chico said this is unlike you so it was like five minutes to the interview, I discovered I needed to download the Ring Central, then install it before I can access it. So I just rushed and sent a mail to the lady and said, please, I am having a problem connecting to the Ring Central. I'm trying to sort that out. At the end of the day, like I was five minutes late to the interview. She was just waiting for me. So when I came on, the first thing she said, I got your message 11.59 and your interview was supposed to be by 12 noon. So I already knew with that statement, I wasn't going to get that job. So it was obvious I wasn't ready for the interview by sending that message by that time. Because if I had sorted it out before the interview, I would have sent that message earlier. But because I wasn't prepared, I didn't check my setup, I it, it came to me on a way and I flopped. In fact, the whole of the interview, I already knew it at the back of my mind that except God intervenes, I wasn't going to get this job and I didn't get the job. So, so that's what not having a very good setup can do to you. Then secondly, choose the right technology. Imagine if when they sent me that Ring Central and I said, Oh, I don't know about Ring Central. Can we use Zoom? Because I had the knowledge of Zoom. It would have helped me. So, but right now, I didn't know. And I, 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 I was like, I felt I knew. And that was what affected me. So when they tell you you're going to be having an online interview and they tell you the platform they're going to use, if you don't have access to that platform, please feel free to let them know so that they can look for another platform for you. Especially for those of us that will be having a UK interview, most regional interviews, they do it virtually. So during that time, if they tell you the platform they're going to use for the interview, please, if you don't have access to it, request for a better platform that you have access to so that that will help you in your interview. That's two. Then three, pick a suitable background. Don't stay in a background where the person interviewing you will be distracted. The person will look at your back, 
see your weavon, see clothes, see hanger. Please make sure you have a very good background that will not distract anybody. A little decoration or even a plain wall behind you or just a drawing behind you is okay for a virtual meeting. And make sure that doesn't distract you yourself because during virtual meeting, you also will be seeing what is behind you. In as much as the person that you are with will also be seeing that. So make sure it's not something that will also distract you, which is what suitable background. Then dress appropriately. Understand the organizational culture of the interview you are going. If you're going for a visa interview, make sure you dress very well. If it's a job interview, make sure you dress very well. Let me give an example. If it was a scholarship interview, I can come the way I am right now. Reason being that there is no organizational thing around it. But if I was going for a medical interview, I should dress like a doctor. We have a dress code so i should dress like a doctor and go for such interview and make sure that when you come beneath in fact make a very good first impression that's what you need to know make a very good first impression why am i saying this this is my current job you know when i got the invitation for the interview first of all it was a medical job so you know, a job that so many people are looking as in towards getting. So now I have the interview. The only thing I did was I prayed very well for it. I won't tell you that I live a life of prayer anyway. So I prayed very well for it. I had to prepare very well for it. In fact, that day I told myself, I'm not going to go on this low cost. I wore weak. I dressed very much like a lady to go for the interview. And it was a virtual interview. And, you know, they were so kind. They told me the nature of persons that were going to be interviewing me. Do you know what I did? I went to browse their names in the different hospitals they are working. I had a, a professor, an associate professor, both doctors, then there is someone in human resource management and someone in administration. I went to browse about them so that I would just know whichever way they bring their question from. Even if I don't know the exact answer, I may be able to like navigate my way through and that helped me because at the end of the interview the question i asked like threw them somehow like who is this girl you know and i felt good at that point in time so always prepare for your interview and once you have an idea of who is going to interview you please do a background research about them do a background research about the company do a background research about the person that is going to interview you then when i applied for funding that scholarship the interview that i went for you know when as in he was like i was going to come up and uh, he wants to talk to me about my research interest to see if he's going to fund me I just told myself, hmm, Zoom meeting, I will have to look for a very good background. So I looked for a background and when he, he came up, we we're, were talking. I was standing. I wasn't sitting because I needed a good background. So in my mind, I, would just, I was just laughing, but I needed that because the truth is what? Be intentional about your life. If you're not intentional, you will miss it. So I was very intentional. And I immediately he told me he was going to interview me. I had to browse his name. That's one good thing about um, approach. That once you can have access to the person, once you know the person's name, what you need is find out the school the person is, find out the organization, browse about the person, you will have your information about the person, except that school doesn't release information about their employees. But if they do, you will have information about the person. So it's very important that you make that finding and do what? Dress appropriately. Very important. Very important. Then stay engaged stay engaged don't distract yourself during an interview even if uh, uh, somebody is knocking on your door make sure that before you start a virtual interview put a sign on your door 
do not disturb. I am in a meeting. I do it very well. In fact, if I turn this my computer, you will see where I made a sticker boldly by my wall. So that once I start a virtual meeting, I'll put it on the door. Do not disturb. I am in a meeting. So make sure you create that boundary with everybody around you, your children, your husband, your wife. Make sure you create that boundary. So that once they see that your children will say, oh, mommy is busy. They won't knock. Your husband sees it. Oh, uh, she is busy. The wife sees it. Oh, he is busy. So let everybody understand that something is going on so that you won't end up um, distracting the people that you are even working with. So keep focused. Some of us have a phobia for camera, but if you have phobia for camera, that's you don't like looking at yourself. The only thing is do what you can turn off your own side. Your other people will be seeing you but you will not be seen yourself. So that will still help you. And that will help you do what? Keep focused and always maintain eye contact. The truth is, if it's in our culture, you don't look at, at an adult eyeball to eyeball, but here they expect you to look at them eyeball to eyeball. They don't expect you to act timid. So when you remove your eye to the person, it seems you are timid. Are you, are you able to face the crowd? That's what will be going on in their mind. So when you are on a virtual interview, look at your camera, not your computer. Look directly to the camera. That's the only way you can maintain eye contact because they themselves interview you. That's where they are looking at. And also have your points planned out. Give yourself some questions. Then another thing that they may ask you during an interview is they can ask you, what's your weak point? Don't go and pay, um, paint yourself like one perfect human being without a fault. Please have one fault that you know you are working on in mind. Like me, one fault I always tell them once they ask me is this. I always tell them I'm a perfectionist. I just want everything done right and on time. But right now I am working on it because I also feel every other person in the team should work at their own pace. Why all of us work together to have a productive team. So you see, in as much as I told them I am a perfectionist, I want things done right. I already gave them a solution of how I'm managing it. So find a fault that you can give a solution as well on how you are managing the fault. So that at the end of your interview, uh, they ask you this question. It's not everybody that asks, but have it at the back of your mind that you could be asked, what is your weak point? So have something to say and don't say you don't have a weak point. Everybody, uh, everybody in the world have something they are struggling with. So don't go and paint yourself 100%. It means you are lying to yourself and you are lying to your interviewer. So having said this, please, I hope you've subscribed. I hope you've shared. I hope you've liked. Invite your friends. Let's grow this community. Is it a community where each and every one of us is going to gain something? And at the end of the day, we'll be proud that we did. Thank you very much. Until my next video, my name is Chigozie. Hit the subscribe, hit the bell, and do what? Like and share. Thank you. Bye.